Hey there YouTube, what's going on? Uh, today we've got a fun video coming at you, another Pokemon one. Uh, this one, you can see a bunch of PSA cards in front of me. This is my first ever PSA return, and it's quite a large one. I've got 84 total cards here. Um, I've sent it back in October at the value tier, 15 bucks a card, um, and here it is December 20th, and they already got it back to me. So, very excited with uh, how fast PSA is moving things nowadays. Um, seems to be in a really good spot, so good time to kind of send cards. But I wanted to take a real a good moment here at the end of 2022 to kind of look at my collection, see where we're at. Um, it'd be fun to document it. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. There's a lot of cards. Um, I'm going to start from 10s, work my way down. Um, the lowest we got, spoiler alert, is a 3, but we'll see. A lot of these are my childhood cards, so they didn't grade the best, but um, they're my childhood cards. You know, I wanted them preserved, I want to keep them forever, so good way to do that with PSA offering that value tier. So we're going to jump right into it here with one of my favorite cards from Modern, um, and it's the Shiny Charizard VMAX uh, from Shiny Fates. This one's a 10. Um, not much to say about it. It's, you know, Charizard's my favorite Pokemon. I'm a sucker for all things Shiny. And uh, he's Gigantamax here, so this is just a really cool card, one of my favorites. So, real happy to get that one back in a 10. I was expecting a 9, so happy on that one. Another one I'm really happy to get is this 10 Pikachu V from the uh, Ultra Premium Collection for the 25th anniversary. Uh, this one I was really happy with because I got into the collecting game a little bit late, so I totally missed this Ultra Premium Collection. So, I got in late, paid a little bit too much, but um, now that I have this in a 10 and then my other metal cards, um, I'm actually very happy with it. Um, again, this will be one that I keep forever um, and just a really cool piece to kind of celebrate Pokemon 25th. I think that is just a really cool card right there. Um, another one with a little bit of sentimental value here. This is a Mewtwo V. Um, I took a trip to South Korea and actually had uh, played Pokemon Go down there and it was an amazing time because there are Pokemon everywhere, people everywhere to raid with. Uh, one of the raids I did was a Mewtwo raid just like this. So downtown Seoul, South Korea, fighting a Mewtwo finally beat it and I missed the catch I couldn't catch it so to have this moment kind of replicated in a card is just really cool um, very happy to have this one at a 10 that's just a fun moment fun memory so happy with that one very much so uh, another cool Pokemon Go card this is that Mewtwo V-Star um, I'm a sucker for gold cards I think they look absolutely amazing um, and again I'm a 90s baby so any of the original 151 is going to have a special place in my heart and this Mewtwo is just phenomenal so absolutely amazing um, another gold card here we've got the Mew from Celebrations this is a shiny Mew um, and again love those gold cards I think they look amazing I um, was very happy to get this in a 10 it looked a little bit off center to me right to left so I was happy to have you know happy to get this got a 10 I hear PSA is a little more lenient so maybe we got lucky on that one um, this was actually my first PSA 10. came back um, a little bit earlier. I sent 10 cards in one submission and 74 in the other. So this one came back, Special Delivery Charizard. Uh, Pokemon Center had a little thing going on. If you signed up, you get a code. and go on their website, buy $25 worth of product. They send you this code. So a lot of them were coming a little bit scuffed um, from being just put in the box with something else. So happy to have that in a 10. Again, anything Charizard, you know, is going to be special to me. So big fan of that card. Uh, this is Lost Origin Pikachu. Again, Pikachu 151, a really good one. But I pulled this one myself. A lot of these cards um, I have not pulled. I don't spend a ton of money trying to chase. You know, I really I open enough cards to have some fun with it, but then any of the big cards that I'm missing, I usually end up buying in the single. So to be able to pull this one was really cool. Uh, my girlfriend and I pulled it together, and I was just real happy about that because it was one of my first quote-unquote big pulls at the time. I was just real stoked to get this one. It was a chase of mine in the set. So real happy to have that. Happy to have it at 10. And then speaking of my girlfriend, here's one that she pulled herself. This was uh, Dragonite V-Star from the Pokemon Go set. And this one was kind of fun because, again, we bought these Japanese packs from a local retailer here in Florida, uh, Pokeballers Mart, and we ended up getting this Dragonite in one of 10 packs. So um, very good set. I mean, I, we bought a random s sampling of packs, and so very happy to get you know an ultra rare out of that um, I just think this card looks amazing and super fun that she pulled it another fantastic memory for us so happy to have that in a 10 uh, Pikachu Zekrom uh, again another Pikachu this was a GameStop promo card I wanted to see how these promo cards would grade so I sent a few of them out and this was one of them um, this one came back at 10 and it's kinda of funny now that uh, I have this in a 10 because one of my most uh, viral TikToks went very viral and it was uh, me opening this set you know, this comes with this card, a jumbo card, and then 10 
sealed booster packs, and out of those 10 booster packs, I only got one VMAX card. All the rest were hollows and, and non hollows. So, it, pretty bad opening overall. So, to get this kind of saved that box, I guess. But fun to have that commemorate that moment. Um, here was, I sent a whole bunch of celebrations. I absolutely loved celebrations. Um, it was a really fun set for me to open. So much nostalgia. So, this was actually the only 10 um, out of the three big guys that I sent. Um, but Blastoise in a Gem Mint 10. It was a fun one to have. And again, Radiant Venusaur. I sent off all of the Radiant cards from Pokemon Go, and this was the only 10 that we got. The little... I guess he's not so little. The large Radiant Venusaur. Gem Mint 10. Fun card there. Um, another sentimental one. This was actually the first Rainbow Rare that I pulled from Battle Styles. Um, you know, overall, not a, not a great set. I didn't pull a ton from that set, so to get even something... Rainbow Rare was really cool. Um, I hear people talking about maybe getting rid of the Rainbow cards. I kind of hope they don't. I, I kind of like the Rainbow cards. They're alright. If they replace the Rainbow cards with something new, I'd be okay. But if they just get rid of them, you know, I'm not a fan of that. So, my first ever Ultra Rare pull. Fun to have that commemorated. And then this is really cool. I love these Trainer Gallery cards. We've got Gary back there and his Jolteon. Um, and these cards just look amazing. I have the rest, the EV, the Flareon and the Vaporeon so I might get those sent off too to kind of commemorate this because it's just I love the addition of the trainer gallery I, I you know I hear rumors we're probably getting rid of it with Scarlet and Violet but I hope they bring it back eventually later in the series later in the you know and then we'll move on to the nines those were all the tens that we got back so out of you know 84 cards maybe 10 of them were tens which Again, not bad considering you'll see how much vintage I sent, and the vintage did not do well because, you know, it's all from my childhood. But the modern stuff um, seemed to do pretty well, so happy with all that. Um, going forward, you know, all my stuff will be modern, and I'll keep better care of it, so we should be able to get more tens going forward, so happy with that. This one, Charizard V-Star. Again, you know how much I love Charizard. Rainbow Rare bought this off TCG Player. The danger of doing that is you can see it's very much more thick on over here on the right than it is the left. That gets it a 9. Um, TCG player, you can't really see the condition of the card, so I would advise if you're buying a high-value card, you go somewhere like eBay or Cool Stuff Inc. Um, somewhere like that where you can actually see the card that you're buying. Um, again, not a huge deal. I'm going to keep this card. I don't plan on selling it, so I don't mind having that in a 9. You know, I'm happy with that. That's a good card. Um, and then here are all of the celebrations here. we got the whole set here. Celebrations trio in a nine with all of those, and that's just you know, that's amazing. The OG3, their original artworks, 25th Pikachu stamp. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. This is a fantastic set. You know, I wish that would, though, all those would have came back in a 10, but you know, nines are fine. And then I sent, like I said, two sets. I went a little hard on celebrations, but such a good set. So much fun to open. So no regrets there. Um, really fun. And then these are the two Radiant cards that I was telling you about. The Venusaur came back a 10, and the Charizard and the Blastoise came back a 9 each. So, uh, I almost would have preferred the Venusaur get a 9 so that I have a full set, but um, that's alright. These cards are just amazing. I'm a sucker for shiny Pokemon. I love shiny Pokemon hunting. Um, the very first shiny Pokemon I ever actually hunted for was a Charizard, obviously. Finally hatched enough eggs using the Medusa method. I think it was in uh, X, no, black and white maybe? I don't even know. It was a long time ago. And I finally, finally found one. This is one of the vintage cards that actually managed to score pretty well. And it was a uh, Mewtwo from Expeditions from all the way back in 2002. And it's got a 9, part of that e-reader series. Um, non hollow but still, again, Mewtwo. Real cool card. Happy to have that. Um, and then this, I think everyone had this card as a kid. Uh, Mew promo from one of the first movie. Um, got this back in a 9, which is pretty cool. Again, most times you get this card as a kid, you're going to play with it. Um, so it's going to come back a little bit dinged and dented. So to have this in a 9, pretty cool, pretty cool. It's not a 10, but, you know, they all they can't all be 10s. Dragon IV, um, this was, again, hindsight. I don't know if I should have even sent this, but uh, now that I got it, it's a pretty cool card. You know, I like these full arts. Um, the background is always a cool color, but what I really like about these is if you put them all in a binder, um, you know, that binder page will look pretty cool with all the different colors. So, really, this is more of a binder piece for me. I should have just probably kept it in a binder, but we sent it off, got a 9, and there it is. Um, another Charizard. 
you know, you can't go wrong with sending Charizards. Take your shot at a 10. This one a little bit off-centered, but again, got to take a shot. Can't all be 10s, but some of them will be. Um, and then we got a Skyla here. Um, I'm not a huge fan of these full art trainer cards, so actually I probably will end up selling some of these, but this is one that I took my shot, tried to get a 10. It's modern, you know, I pulled it myself. Um, so you take your shot. Can't all get 10s, but... Uh, another promo card this is from that Arceus V promo collection box. Um, and this is a, a really good box by itself, but uh, this promo card is just actually amazing. I I love it. You know, I, I don't I don't pull many alt arts, so I don't think I'm gonna ever pull the Arceus alt art. So to have it here is um, a really cool thing in my opinion. I, I like this. Didn't come back at ten, but again, promo cards are tough to grade sometimes. You know, they're kind of shoved in those boxes. It's kind of hard to get out, so you never know what you're gonna get. Um, and the light Flareon, another vintage card. Um, these light and dark evolution cards are so cool. Um, so I sent this one off. This was the best condition of all the light and dark cards that I had. Um, I have all the evolutions here. So I took this as to take a shot at a 10. Didn't quite get it. Um, probably, you know, there's a little bit of whitening. But overall, I thought it looked pretty good. Good enough to take a shot. So we took it. Got a 9. That's all right. Another one we took a shot at was this uh, Bulbasaur. Not not shadowless or anything, just base set. But again, I thought this one was clean enough that it had a shot at a 10. And how cool would it be to have all three starters in a 10? So I had to take my shot. Got a 9. No big loss there. Love the little Bulbasaur. Uh, now we are on to the 8s. And these are this is going to be a fun, fun stack. Start of a fun stack. 7s are a really fun stack. Um, these are actually, a lot of these are the Legendary Collection Reverse Holographic Cards. Um, so I pulled some of these as a kid and was fortunate enough to... Actually, I was a little bit older at this time. So I was kind of like, hey, you know, I'm not going to play with these as much. Let's put them in a binder, keep them safe. So these managed to pull eights. And for these reverse hollows, that's pretty good because it's really hard to uh, grade these with this, this whole hollow pattern on the front. Um, so to get Moltres in an eight is a pretty good one. You know, legendary bird, one of the OGs. Um, real happy card, a really good card. Happy with this, to have this in an eight. Uh, no complaints there. And then keeping the legendary collection going. We got a Jolteon here in the 8th. People love their evolutions. So that's always a good one to have. And again, no complaints about the 8. The legendary collections are very difficult. <laughs> Sorry, I got a phone call actually. Um, so Kadabra here is another reverse reverse foil legendary collection sorry I'm filming with my phone and a, and a phone call came through so it just uh, blocked it out for a second but we're back we're back um, legendary collection near mint 8 again no complaints I love that firework pattern on all of these just looks so good you know I imagine if I had had you know the big dogs if I if this was an Alakazam or a Charizard blast or any of those but man even those second evolutions are still cool Again, so many memories with these Pokemon. Um, another one here, and this is a fun one. My girlfriend's first shiny Pokemon in Pokemon Violet was actually a Meowth. So she evolved into Persian, and if you don't know, the shiny Persian is actually the only thing different is the ears are pink instead of black. So not the best shiny, but it was her first. So, you know, always fun. Again, the memories we make with Pokemon, it's fun to have it encapsulated. Um, that's a fun one to have. Another one here, Rhyhorn. Um, most of the ones I have in here are just basic Pokemon. Like I said, I don't have too many big hitters with the Legendary Collection, but even to have these in Reverse Hollow and with such a good grade is, you know, I'm all about that. And this is another uh, TCG player horror story. This is the alt art from Brilliant Stars, Charizard V. Love this art where he's over here fighting the Venusaur back, back there, um, you know, scorching everything up. But look at how off-center that thing is. I mean, look left to right. And then look here on the back. I mean, this thing can almost be a miscut. It's just... It's rough. So this is one where you buy it off TCG Player. You don't see... It just says near mint. And it is. It's near mint. But it's very off-center. But that's the risk you take. You know, lessons learned. This was the first big ticket card I probably had ever bought. This is the first alt art I ever bought. So, um... You live and you learn. Now I'm going to go to eBay or something like that where I can see the card, um, know what I'm getting. But um, even to just have this card, unfortunate, 
you know, this is a, an amazing card. So the fact that it's off center, you know, is okay because I still have the art. And it's just an amazing card. I love that, especially with the three promos from the Ultra Premium Collection where you see him kind of sleeping after that fight. It's just pretty neat. This is a fun one. It's the Legendary Collection Charizard. It's um, non-hollow. This actually came in, included in the decks. There was some deck that had Ninetales as the kind of big Pokemon in there, but it had Charizard in there as well. It was a fire deck. And again, at this time, I was a little bit older, so I was like, hey, let's keep these safe. I bought the decks just so I could have the Charizards because I knew Charizard was a, you know, a rare card. So I bought this, kept it in the binder, and there we go. Came back with an 8, so pretty happy with that one. Uh, another e-reader card. This one is from 2002 as well. Amphros Reverse Hollow. Love the Reverse Hollow. Amphros is one of my favorites from Gen 2. Um, in this e-reader series, you either love it or you hate it. I mean, it's uh, very polarizing. That real thick border. But I love the Reverse Hollow on that too. It just looks so clean. So happy to have that one in eight. Uh, another this Pokemon Mewtwo. Uh, <laughs> Pokemon Mewtwo. Pokemon Expedition from 2002. Mewtwo in a, in an eight. Again, not hollow, thick border, but good one to have an eight. Now this one, uh, OG base set Zapdos. This is the one I sent in. I actually thought it might have a shot at a ten. That's just, uh, I swear, that's just on. The, that's not. That's not on the card. I promise. But I thought it had a shot at a ten. Came back an eight. I think a lot of these, um, you know, I just kept them in a binder, and it was a uh, just a circle binder. It was not D-ring. Um, and it was a ringed binder, and I did not even have a sleeve on it. So I think a lot of these might have some sort of surface damage that I cannot see. So you're going to see that a lot in these next cards that are 7s, 6s, and below. And I think a lot of that is because, as Deep Pocket Monsters would say, it's just bad binder behavior, bad storage behavior. And I, I think I definitely did that as a kid. And now you know that I'm a little bit older, I take care of my cards a little bit better. We got better binder behavior. But... Um, great looking card here. I mean, this card just looks amazing. And here we're getting into first edition. I don't have very many of these, so the ones that I did have I wanted to send. Clefable, non hollow comes back in 8. Again, can't complain about that. 8s are solid grade. Uh, and then this is a fun one. We got a miscut here, off-centered. Uh, Weeping Bell came back in 8 from the 2. You see there, that's the little dot where they're supposed to line up and cut, but obviously they missed it. So this one, way, way, way off cut. I mean, hey, it looks like my Charizard alternate art anyway. So that was a fun one. Sent that, my only off center. I've got actually one more. I didn't send it, but I just kept it just to have it, but still pretty cool. All right, this next stack is going to be almost all. There's a ton of reverse legendaries in here, for, or the legendary collection of reverse hollows in here, and they almost all got sevens. Again, starting off with the big boy. This is a Pikachu. The OG design here from Jungle. Love that little design, but then the firework pattern just looks amazing. And again, I can't complain with a 7, considering I didn't sleeve these or anything. I just put them in the binder and <laughs> left them for 20 years. They've been with me for three moves across two different states, so happy to even have them. A 7, you can't complain. I'll take that all day long. And again, let's keep these ones going. There's a bunch of them here. Dark Dragonair, same thing. Not much to say. Love this artwork. Again, can you imagine if this was a Dragonite? But love it. He looks, I mean, he looks angry. He's dark. He's angry. Amazing card there. Arcanine. Everyone's favorite good boy. In a seven. Showing off those fireworks. Again, if you pulled this, you might think it's a Charizard. If you pulled this from the bottom and pulled up, oh man, you'd be... Be teased a little bit there. Graveler, another second evolution. I have a lot of second evolutions in a seven from this uh, reverse hollow legendary collection. Good looking cards though. Dark Slow Bro, this is another fun one from the Rocket Era. Um, again, I like how they threw those in there. It wasn't just the base set or the jungle that could be reverse hollow. They also did the Dark Slow Bros. Again, this was the legendary collection was an amazing set if you get your hands on it and you open it. Not only for the reverse hollows, but just everything inside is just an amazing set to open. So, very fortunate that I was able to open some as a kid and then kind of hang on to them. And again, we'll go pretty quick through these. They're all basic Pokemon, Execute there, Rattata here, and they're all sevens. They're all pretty much the same. Spearow. Again, the backs look okay, but honestly, I think there's some sort of surface damage. I mean, especially with a hollow pattern like that, I mean, it's tough. Seal. 
<laughs> what Pokemon design there? Just let's make a seal. Okay, what should we name it? Uh, seal's fine. Caterpie. Do love the Caterpie. Ash's first catch. Caterpie leads to Bye Bye Butterfree. We won't talk about that, but Ash Ketchum finally retiring after so many years. And then we're into we're out of the legendary collection. I think that's the last of the reverse hollows. So we're back into base set. Here's an Alkazam from my childhood. Again, uh, this is a fun one because everyone's talking about these yellow borders. We're at the point where the next um, set in English, Scarlet and Violet, will be silver borders. We'll be going away from the yellow borders. And this is one of the rare cases where the yellow border actually looks way better or looks great because it's an Alkazam. So the yellow fits his aesthetic. So sad to have the yellow borders going away. Um, maybe, maybe not. I like the silver borders, but you know, there's something about the yellow border that just, you know, is part of the childhood. Again, another base set. Um, Gyarados used to love this card. I used to love. I mean, this card was really good because it had Bubble Beam, which did 40 damage, and you could paralyze the Pokemon, and 50 damage for just three energy. So this was a pretty strong Pokemon. I remember running a water deck that had Gyarados and Blastoise in it, and it was. Uh, very strong at the time. Uh, Entei, this was the first Reverse Hollow card ever printed, so to commemorate that you had to get this one. And again, that full Reverse Hollow pattern is tough to grade, so seven it is. We'll take that. Shiny Kabutops, this is one I don't even remember pulling as a kid, but opened the binder, saw it in there, and was like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize I had a Shiny Pokemon in there. So, again, I didn't keep very, well care, very good care of this. Seven is alright, we'll take that all day long. Magby, another one, is a seven, probably because of the hollow pattern. I think just, if you can see on there, there's a little scratch. You can kind of see in there. Um, but another e-reader, hollow, when they introduced baby Pokemon. So a fun one to have. Arizu, uh, another modern that somehow got a seven. And I don't know how on this one. So that's a big surprise to me. Maybe it was that off-centered. Maybe there was a scratch on there I didn't see. But... Yeah, surprised to see that as a 7. And then here we had some Japanese stuff. Um, both of these from Neo Genesis, Japanese set um, for Alligator, Meganium. So I need the Typhlosion next. I keep getting that uh, light glare up there. I'm sorry about that, but I'm trying to get the hollow pattern in there on both of these. So I need to get the Typhlosion in a 7, and then we'll have the whole set. Um, Gold and Silver, arguably the best Pokemon games ever. So to have those guys, you know, I don't know how I got my hands on Japanese cards as a kid, but I did. I got some of them. I must have talked my mom into letting me buy sketchy products from Japan and somehow off eBay and somehow they got to me. So happy to have those. And then another Japanese, um, the Rockets Mewtwo. Um, just another love that OG151 Mewtwo is, you know, one of the strongest there is. So happy to have that. And then we're on to the sixes, which this actually starts with a pretty fun one because we've got one, two, three from my childhood, three starters from my childhood all coming in at, you know, excellent six, which, you know, isn't the best, especially now as a collector, but considering I had these and played with these as a kid in childhood, I mean, I'm not going to complain with that. This one actually looked the cleanest, and you can see some whitening on all the rest of these, but... I mean, just to have these cards in a full set that I played with as a kid, you know, 20 years ago, is just absolutely amazing to me. I love these cards. These are some that will be with me forever. They'll be passed down to my kids, hopefully, then to my grandkids, you know, and hopefully they stay in the family. We can pass down our love of Pokemon generation to generation, and hopefully they appreciate those cards at least a little bit, because I just appreciate them so much. Another Alakazam. I had a couple duplicates from this. Um, you know, as a kid, I traded, collected. So I've got a few duplicates coming in at six. Again, the uh, condition on these, not the best. I did not keep very good care of these. Um, you know, I put them in a binder, but they did not have any penny sleeves or anything like that on them. Um, and like I said, they survived two, no, three or four moves across two different states. So, um, happy to even have the cards. And they're not getting any better condition, so to have them even here in sixes, you know, I'll take that all day. This is a, one of those promo cards. Again, I think everyone has this card, but 
had to get it encapsulized. This is one I was sad with. This is a light, light Arcanine. I love this hollow pattern you see back there, the, the flowers back there. And he is just loving life, having a good time. I'm sad this got a 6 because it looked pretty good, except right up there, I think that little dent is considered a crease and gave it a 6 all the way down. And that one hurt because this is such a cool card. I mean, yeah, it's still a good card. It's still great, all that. But, you know, this could have been an 8 or a 9, in my opinion, had not been for that one crease. So, still a cool card. I'm going to display this one for sure because I love that hollow pattern. It just looks amazing. And then the same thing on these two. Uh, we've got a Raikou and a Celebi. Um, actually, that one's kind of cool, so I'll show you something. Like that. But again, same thing. I think these were in my binder and might have gotten a binder crease somewhere. You know, you hear the horror stories about putting them in a binder, um, a ringed binder specifically, and then they can rub up against a ring and get a little crease. So I think that might have happened with some of these, because other than that, they look amazing. So there must have been some crease somewhere. But this one is really cool because it's got a hollow bleed. You can see that on there. You can see all over there, the hollow, the hollow pattern is bleeding out of the card. And you can see it up here too. There's a should be yeah, yeah, that big dot right up there, you can see it. Going back and forth. And that is really cool. Again, sad this one got a six because I thought it could get, could have got an eight. I mean it looks pretty clean, but again, I think there is a little crease somewhere along this. Probably from a, a binder edge, if I had to guess. So overall though, really cool card again there. Alright, so we got a few more left here. Hopefully you didn't see that one. I mean I'm sure you have, but um, that's going to be our last one. So here we go. We got some more, again, from my childhood. EX5, excellent. You know, these are still, it's graded excellent. These are still in pretty good condition considering they're from 1999. Um, you know, I played with these as a kid. That's What can you say? Took them to school, traded them, battled them, played Safari Zone with my friends, you know, all that stuff. So to even have them is, is amazing. Same thing here with this Dragonite. Absolutely love this hollow pattern. Looks so good. I mean, look how scratched and scuffed that is. That's just this is why you sleeve your cards kids but happy to even have them you too again ex5 we'll take it Gyarados we've seen that again nine tails we've seen that one these are all doubles at this point really um, legendary collection this one must have had a crease in it somewhere as well um, because this one only pulled five and same thing, I bought it just the same time as that one that got an 8. Probably kept them the same way. Now this is a cool one, Dark Blastoise. This is one I did not have before. Only got a 5. I'm sure there's some scratching, some hollow pattern wear and all that stuff. But even to get a 5 is pretty good. I love that card. These dark cards are so cool. This is Dark Gyarados first edition. Pulled a 5. Again, could have been better. But to even have them is still pretty sweet. Especially first edition. I mean, I got in a little bit too late to get first edition stuff so to even have a few of those relics is just amazing dark champ ex5 and then another first edition this is my l lowest grade this number three <laughs> this is articuno first edition must be i mean this must be some scratching on the hollow you want to see the back you know it was played with as a kid no doubt about that I'm not going to argue with this grade, but hey, to even have it in a slab, it authenticates it. This card is real. I had it as a kid. Uh, first edition Articuno is still amazing. You know, it's not pack fresh or anything like that, but absolutely amazing. So, absolutely amazing. These cards are, I'm so happy to have them back. I mean, these, these were my childhood, and now getting back into them, um, as you can see, the modern stuff. Just got back into it this year, so to be able to... Uh, document this moment in time as this is where my collection is now at the end of 2022 it'll be fun to see how it grows and evolves so thanks for stopping by thanks for hanging out uh let me know uh what, what sort of, what sort of content you want to see going forward i mean i can do more psa stuff i can do openings here on twitch uh youtube any of those and then put the you know the highlights over on twitter instagram TikTok, anything like that. So let me know what you guys want to see in the comments. Um, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Uh, give this video a like if you like it. Sub if you want to see more content like that. And uh, I will catch you guys in the next one. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.